All right, guys, Satch Grubber here today, and we're going to be breaking down the final day of Division A, the first split of Division A, at least, at the City Build Global Pro League. A lot of crazy results, so like if you enjoy it, subscribe if you're new as always, maybe even turn the notification bell on if you're really feeling frisky, and uh, yeah, let's get right into it. So UYU versus Red Reserve, of course. UYU have been the nemesis of Red Reserve, or at least some of the players on this team, for so long, and finally, Red get the better of them here. They beat UYU beat them at uh, Vegas and also the Pro League Qualifier, I believe, and finally, as I say, Red Reserve get their revenge. This really wasn't particularly close. Red Reserve pulled away. I don't know. It, it always felt comfortable for Red, even though it did get a little bit close to down towards the end there. And yeah, Rated and Scraps had a fantastic maps right here. And Scraps has really been, you know, he hasn't been maybe his normal self, you could say, the last couple of days or, you know, this week especially. But Rated really showed up and, you know, Scraps played great map number one here. So yeah, Red managed to get the better of UIU on this map. And yeah, if UIU can't win the hard points in this series, it's it's going to be super tough because their S&D has really been where the struggles have been lying, I would say. So in the S&D, they lose in a 6-5. This is just, well, really unfortunate for UIU. As you can see here, Easy Max uh, screenshots from his spreadsheet right here. I'll leave his Twitter on the spreadsheet down in the description box below, as I always do. So you can find all this good stuff there. And yeah, this game was super close. Super back and forth, 0 one 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 two one two two three two etc. All the way through to the final round. Scraps went 1-9, but 0 hard bailed them out. And yeah, Red Reserve, up 2-0. They usually don't look back from there when they win their search and destroys then we go into the control and UIU have honestly been really damn good at gridlock control they both played it a fair few times and yeah UIU went up 2-0 in this one they won their offense relatively comfortably and then crushed red on defense but the round I'm going to show you in just a second here is this third round where red reserve somehow managed to come back and win it on the defense even though it was a very sketchy situation they get streaks and end up closing out the game pretty comfortably do red reserve and yeah once again scraps is a fantastic game really not showing his best side in uh, Search and Destroy right now, maybe in the second map, but yeah, really turned up right here, and Red Reserve get the hot three over, over UIU. Wasn't as convincing as the overall scoreline would suggest. All maps were relatively close, but UIU always seemed to be the nemesis of Red, so I'm sure they'll appreciate this win, and they move to four and three. So this is that third round of the control where Red Reserve really need to win this to try and make the reverse sweep within the control, which they end up pulling off, and it's really thanks to Raid to right here with the Annihilator. Pops a two-piece. That second shot is super hard to do and look at this one on methods the micro adjustment the left trigger aiming there just moving slightly back into the left and then moving over to the right was just fantastic and this really this play itself wins them the game right here because he gets kind of good timing on skies takes down this one and this shot is not easy again on night but yeah hits that no problem at all so I think he went well five for five at least but I think his annihilator ran up to the point where he only got to use five shots but regardless he finishes off the job really nicely here with the ICR and he just wasn't missing at all and yeah, these streaks really help them down the stretch. You see he gets another one in just a second here to pick up the full streaks and get the drone squad indeed onto methods. And yeah, UIU couldn't get close to the hill towards the end of this game. And that kill really spelled disaster down the stretch. So this is the box score for the end of the series. You can see Scraps has a fantastic series, 55 in 45, even though he went 1 in 9 in the search. So yeah, he was a monster. Rated did very well as well. Of course, that play right there where he got streaks. I think Scraps got streaks as well in that one. And yeah, it was just a minefield that UIU were walking into at the end there. Mayhem and Methods, usually the hard carries for this team, still pretty solid, but couldn't get anything done. And yeah, Mayhem typically tends to be the absolute hard count of a red reserve. And well, it didn't come to fruition this time. Finally, they get the better of them. Now, this was a hell of a series. Gen G versus Midnight. After week number one, both of these teams were undefeated, I think. So a lot of people were thinking this series would be crazy close. But considering the fashion in which Midnight lost yesterday to Luminosity, I was favoring Gen G here, especially how good Gen G's S and is. I was thinking if Gen G can just win a couple maps, they can definitely win map two, they can definitely win map five, and I thought that's how it would go down, probably. But Midnight win 3 1, and it's very rare that Midnight go up early in a hard point. They got battered yesterday on frequency hard point by Luminosity, which is usually one of their pretty good ones, but then again, Luminosity are unreal on the map, and we'll talk about that more in a few minutes' time right here. But yeah, Gen G 250 to 123 map number one. Of course, Gen G are used to losing map ones. They didn't yesterday against Opti. 
into gaming, but they were only in the lead after the very first till, and Midnight really ran away with it from there. They looked much better today, and it was really off the back of Brack and Envoy just turning up big time, because these guys had really tough series the last couple of days, and well, look at the slang right here. You're not going to lose a game when that's the slang. Map number two, of course, Genji just come out and smoke Midnight. 6-1 on Gridlock. They are just unbelievable in search. I think they have four of the top five S and D KDs right now. So Spacely is the only player outside of the top five S and D KDs. All the other four are in there somewhere. And Maniac has really been having a hard time in respawn lately, as we'll see in a second. But his search and destroy is still monstrous. And yeah, they were never behind in this one. Midnight really couldn't get close to them. And if there's a Team you want to look at for their search and destroy. I'm pretty sure Genji is still undefeated in search after the first two weeks of gameplay, which is pretty mind blowing. But map number three, Midnight managed to come back and win this one. And this is traditional Midnight right here. Defense won the very, the first four rounds. And then finally Midnight closes out towards the end because Brack went off. He got streaks. Envoy did really well as well. I was very impressed by Jet Li in this as well. And yeah. Llama God tends to be their hard carry in the controls, but this game he didn't have to do anything because Brack got full streaks as he has been doing. But yeah, just in that series versus Luminosity and the one they played earlier on in the week where they lost to Reciprocity, of course. Yeah, they didn't really seem to be on the same page. They didn't seem to be as tight a unit as they were in the first week and they were right back to form here and I didn't really expect it but it shows good things because I was hoping Midnight wouldn't you know fully collapse after their first week. Map number four Midnight closes out 250 to 170 and Genji usually are super super strong in the fourth half point but Midnight once again just went off here. Llama God didn't take over map three control really took over on this map and yeah show a clip of this in just a second so a very interesting scenario Genji lose their perfect record and it's Midnight of all teams after having a tough week of losing to Reciprocity and they lost to Luminosity got completely smoked. Beating Gen G was a big surprise to me. If this had gone map 5, well I think we know what would have happened but very impressive for Midnight to win all three respawns against a team as talented and as good right now as Gen G. So this is the final minute here. This is where Llama God really goes off in this map 4 hard point and yeah he's really close to streaks. He's trying to hold down the front, putting shots into Maniac and yeah Maniac for some reason he takes on Havoc as well. That's a really big gunfight. That gets some streaks but Maniac has really been struggling in the respawns and I don't quite understand it because he always seems to be going off in the searches and whenever he pulls an annihilator out he doesn't miss but the fact that he's been consistently negative in the hard points especially over the last week is somewhat surprising to me and Genji's you know his teammates have bailed him out and yeah Morks and Maniac were really should be their hard carries uh, in at least the respawn game and you can't expect Havoc with the SMG to do too much <laughs> nearly takes out his teammate right here as well but uh, regardless Parzelion versus Maniac is the, the specialist battle right now with the Annihilator, the wild, wild west, as uh, as Momo says right here. And Parzelion back to form again with that Annihilator, it seems. He was doing really well with the ICR. And yeah, Genji can't even get close to the hill right here. The streaks are raining in from all directions and Midnight take it 3 to 1. So these are the stats at the end of the series. Brack and Envoy, the real MVPs right here. Parzelli on a great series as well. But yeah, Maniac, 51 and 71. Same with Naga. Not really what you expect out of that caliber of player. But anyway, Genji, not too much big deal. They're still 6-1 and one, top of the league. Team Reciprocity versus Evil Geniuses. EG were 0-6 coming into this matchup and I predicted EG to win just because I thought that I changed my mind last minute but I just thought that they should win both hard points and I just wasn't really impressed by Reciprocity's clutch factor at all so I fancied EG and I thought that Exotic had a really bad series on Wednesday and this time he wouldn't have the same bad series but I thought I'd have to eat my words a little bit considering Reciprocity went up super heavy early on on Seaside Hardpoint 143 to 21 at one time but EG bring it back all the way Exotic goes 35 in 20 you have to be kidding me Vicento's double neg but who cares I think he was 1 in 14 at one point on the score but it was just unreal what was going on but anyway Reciprocity throw it away and Jesus man Dent has a good game but they can never get on the same page at the same time and when EG starts snowballing, Reciprocity just stagger so hard. They send people in, there's no trades. It's just woeful to watch their hard point right now. And that's why I favoured EG to win both of them. And yeah, they come back and win this one 250 to 224. 
seaside half points, those comebacks kind of happen, but still pretty tragic. Map number two, Reciprocity is 6 0 EG. Like, their search and destroy EGs is so bad, it's mind blowing. They do the same stupid things every single round. They don't get any trades. Reciprocity just demolished them off the map in this search and destroy. And I was like, damn, like, if they get getting wrecked that badly, like, this is probably going to go to a map five, and then there's no chance EG win, right? But yeah, as it turns out, EG managed to win the next two. Even after coming back off the back of a 6-0, it's crazy. They just 3-0'd them in the control. Relatively convincing as well here. Exotic once again, 17-12. and 12. Felony went off as well. And yeah, relatively convincing from EG. They had a couple close rounds to start with. But that's the thing. Once you get on the defense and you've got a lot of lives left, it's just too easy once you've got specialists rolling with as well. So Reciprocity really after the first two rounds didn't have much chance. Map number four. EG closed it out in convincing fashion right here. Exotic, 32 in 15, man. For Cento had a fantastic map as well. He got full streaks early on. I'll show you a clip in just a second here from, well, Goonjar and Exotic going off towards the end of this game. And, well, we can see how Reciprocity just stagger so hard. And from beating Midnight and LG, Reciprocity lose all their other series. And, well, a lot of people, including me, coming into the league wouldn't have expected this. But I really don't think they're a good team right now. I think their hard point and their control is really challenging. Challenging. And if they can't win a single map of them against EG, the 0 in 6 team in the league, then you've got real problems. So, this is the final minute of that match. We've got Goonjar here with the Tempest. And oh my word, like, Shawnee gets so unlucky right there, the way it spreads all throughout them. And yeah, Zed gets taken down in a second in this corner here because Royalty shoots him in the back. But look at this rotation here over towards the new one. For center's going to get caught off guard. Felony does well to try and trade. But look at this from Exotic. Okay, he gets a two piece with the War Machine. Look at the spawns from Reciprocity. They still spawn in the back of the new hill and look at this he pops out another war machine bullet and in just a second here, he's going to get another two piece with it which is just woeful how have they not put on flak jacket they literally just died to exotic i think and the fact that they haven't put it on is just mind-blowing to me they still have the favorable spawns to reciprocity in the back and exotic is super close to streaks here he's telling his teammates to bait for him he wants someone to go first he's like for Sento, go bait for me for Sento dies he gets his other teammate to go bait for me in just a second as well here comes his boy and yeah royalty does kind of well Zotic is trying to get kill streaks as much as he can everyone is flying in front of him and exotic decides okay fine i'll do it myself pops the two pieces maven said yesterday there's the third full streaks and yeah, that really spelled the end there for Reciprocity and just woeful. So this is the final series score. Dens gets an honourable MVP. But yeah, Exotic, no questions asked, was the MVP of that series. Dominated both hard points on their way to the victory. So now this was an interesting series. Optic versus LG. And well, surprising to a lot of people, but OG come out really hot. They got 2-0 in the series. LG looking a little bit shaky on this first Hacienda hard point. And well, even though Gunless goes 31 in 26, doesn't matter when all these cylinders are firing on the side of Optic. Of course, they still have Zuma. It's not the dashy Optic. But uh, yeah, we can talk about that more in probably some content that I make this weekend. Karma has a great map as well. Optic closes out pretty comfortably, to be honest. It always felt like they're in control. Map 2, 6-3 Optic. Optic search and destroy looking really good here on Gridlock. And LG, yeah, they made a couple of questionable plays. John did well to, he won like a 1v3 at one of the points, but it doesn't work out down the line. Classic has a pretty bad map, and yeah, Optic looking really strong in this one. The specialist use was very good towards the end, but then things turn around against them, and LG win the control 3-1. to one. Gunless just goes off, 24 and 14, not surprised at all. And yeah, defense once again winning it. Considering Luminosity had defense the first round, I, you know, it seems favorable that they should win down the line especially when specialists come into play and one thing that easy mac was telling me yesterday that on gridlock control it may feel to some of you guys that the attackers have a very good chance considering they basically get a point for free but still about 58 percent of rounds on gridlock are won by the defense and if it's 58 percent on gridlock and it always comes down to that b objective like imagine what it is on seaside i i can't wait to get the stats on that but yeah lg win this control and then going into map number four they actually really convincingly dispatch of optic now i don't know why optic elected to play frequency because luminosity have been so good on it the last few days and the fact that optic gaming decided to challenge them here is very questionable john always seems to go off on this map slack has been doing really well as well lately like look at that scoreboard at the bottom can you believe what you're seeing slack is 34 and 15 john's 33 and 19 and formal's just chilling at 18 and 19 just like what more do you want me to do because 
Object just got blown out on this one. It really wasn't close at all at any point. And yeah, I can't say I'm particularly surprised. With the Zuma Optic not going to be as good as the Dashi Optic, of course, and how good LG have looked on this map, I'm very surprised Optic didn't elect to veto it. So then, of course, map number five. It goes all the way down to around 11, as of course it would. And I'll show you a clip in just a second of how Gunless really saves Luminosity towards the end here. They go up five to three, and LG choke it a little bit, they lose two rounds in a row, Optic bring it down to a round 11, and well, we'll see how the gameplay turned out in just a second here. Karma really was, I would say, the only shining light here for Optic. He had a couple of really good plays, but apart from that, look at the slaying. Like, LG were pretty much dominating them on the slaying half of things. Slacked had a very good map once again, and you have to give him massive credit because he has been doing really well, responding to the haters, as it were, saying that, you know, he's the one to go. And, well, on this form, you cannot say that at all. And I wonder if you guys think that LG still need a change, because I might make a, an entirely separate video on that, whether LG should still consider one, even though they've been doing much better. They won this series, they reverse swept Optic right here, but there's so much talent on the market that it's arguable that a change could still be beneficial. So Gunless gets this two-piece over towards this lower side. Formal Gills one-off bomb, a Crim6 closes him out. So it's now all on Gunless and he's 100 off a of Lightning right here. And with 18 seconds left, there's no chance he's going to be able to defuse. He catches Crim6 checking the, for the defuse here. And I think that's kind of questionable from Crim6 to check the bomb like that. You're effectively just feeding streaks, and Skump does the same thing, just flying out. He uh, manages to get away over towards the bomb, and Gunless closes him out with that pistol right there. He gets full streaks off that. He's using the strike for some reason rather than the Mozu, but regardless. Slacked is over here towards mid, and this is when Gunless had already called in the Sniper's Nest. So Gunless already calls in the Sniper's Nest. These guys are really risking it right now on Optic Gaming to try and push out here, but they don't have another choice because they can't go and just plant a bomb like you would normally expect because the Sniper's Nest of Gunless is going to take them down. And that's why you can see TJ on new mini map number four. He pushes all the way into the back with the bomb because, well, they have to kill the guys on Luminosity because they can't risk planting or the sniper's nest is just going to take him down because both bombs are outside. So he gets killed by the sniper's nest and now it's all on optic to try and push the rest out the back and yeah, Crimson got caught off guard by my man Gunless sitting all the way in the corner. Slack loses a gunfight here to Scump in just a second but Formal closes it out from behind and that spells the end of the series. Those streaks from Gunless were just like, they clutched up super huge getting those ones. Arguable that maybe Optic made a couple of mistakes in checking the bomb overly aggressively there but I guess they couldn't really do too much about it. Gunless is is just that guy. They win 3-2. So this is the box score finally at the end of the series here. Crim6 is a pretty good time of things, but Gunless, John and Slacked going off. Slacked, man, you have to give this guy credit. 92 in 66 over the entirety of the series. Really good in that second half point and especially the final S&D as well. Really clutched up when his team needed him. So yeah, you have to give him credit. So these are the final standings after the first split of Division A. The first two weeks of gameplay. Genji at 6-1. Midnight just behind them at 5-2. Then you've got Optic and Red Reserve. Pretty impressive from Optic considering, of course, they've had a substitute. UYU, Luminosity, who really came back nicely with this 3-1 in one week. And Reciprocity and Evil Geniuses who have shown glimpses of brilliance, but you know, nothing spectacular yet. Reciprocity are just such an up and down team. It's super hard to call right now. Let's go on to Division B, what it's looking like. So this is starting Monday. So the first matches are Heretics versus E United and Envy versus 100 Thieves on the Monday. And this is the division. So these are all the teams. This should be more top heavy and maybe easier to predict. But, you know, Vamos Heretics, who the hell knows? So anyway, like if you enjoyed, subscribe if you're new. Thank you guys so much for watching as always. And I'll see you next time.